for today, Digital Taya Trainer. With an extensive background on youth development and engagement, he used to lead the Youth Vote Philippines as the coalition lead convener and spokesperson in both 2016 and 2019 national elections. Currently, he focuses his engagement on freelance works, particularly on content development and content management. He used to work as a former program manager for the ASEAN Youth Community, communications manager for Weigel Incorporated, president of Philippine Leadership and Empowerment Alliance for Development Incorporated, and is currently one of the skills development trainers for Facebook Digital Tayo campaign. Ladies and gentlemen, our speaker for today, please help me welcome Mr. Chard Amazona. Sir, take it away. All right. Thank you, Ms. May. So again, good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. So we are, what, um, around 942 in Facebook, and more or less we have 500 um, listeners and watchers from, from Zoom. So again, magandang magandang umaga. So it's a Wednesday morning. So we hope that uh, all of us are actually ready for today because our topic is more focused on being magala. So as we start our discussion for this morning, ayan, ang topic natin ay pag-uusapan lamang natin paano nga ba magiging isang magala. How to be magalang in, in a way, no, kahit pa paano, pagka meron tayong online engagement. Paano nga ba tayo magiging champion ng pagiging magalang as part of our digital citizenship? So ngayong umaga, dahil marami na tayong handang-handa na ngayong umaga, allow me to explain some of the, the things that we need to also take note as part of our discussion for this morning. So alam naman po natin that digital tayo, syempre, um, we wanted to really build a global community of responsible digital citizens. So yung goal po natin dito ay nakabase sa tatlong bagay. Una ay building awareness. Pangalawa is education and of course, thought leadership. So mapapansin po ninyo, marami dito uh, sa inyo at naka-attend na rin ng ilang mga training programs na kung saan ay nakafocus tayo on building awareness and education. So base po sa ating mga partners din from across the, the country, ito po yung mga bagay na gusto namin i-share sa inyo ngayong umaga at parte din po ng digital tayo campaign. And syempre, when we talk about building awareness, meron tayong different uh, mechanism na kung saan ay nais po nating mas maging engaging yung pag-uusapan natin. No? We are actually, we partnered with a lot of uh, different organizations across the region na kung saan pag-uusapan din natin how to be really uh, responsible as part of digital community. And with that, we would like to say thank you as well as part of our collaboration. Ito pong mga pinag-uusapan natin o yung mga pag-uusapan pa natin sa mga susunod na araw o susunod na linggo is actually part of a collaboration between different um, organizations and companies. As we can see, parte po ang Department of Information and Communication Technology sa pagbabahagi ng kung saan, paano nga ba tayo magiging isang responsabling digital citizen. At bilang bahagi din ng ating pag-uusap ngayong umaga, ay nais lamang din natin bigyan ng pansin ano nga ba yung tinatawag nating digital citizen where we talk about digital citizenship or who is actually a digital citizen. So for everyone who are watching, we are at around 185 in Facebook Live. No? A digital citizen is actually a person who confidently uses digital technologies to really understand information online and interact positively with others. So yung keyword po natin dito when we talk about digital citizen ay understanding information online and interacting positively with others. So bahagi ng pag-uusapan natin ngayon ay pagpapalawig. Ano nga ba pinag-uusapan natin digital citizen? And syempre, what's to come? So how to be a responsible digital user? So dito pag-uusapan natin that we really wanted to create a safe online environment. Last week, you were able to talk about your digital footprint. This time, we are actually focusing on you as digital citizen. But before we proceed with our discussion for this morning, meron lang muna tayong ilang bagay na nais nating, um, syempre, no, kailangan handang-handa tayo ngayong umaga. Kaya syempre, parang bahagi na rin ng ating pag-uusap, we wanted to test you guys with our pre-test. So dahil majority of us are actually using Facebook as part of our platform every day. Simula na nagkaroon ng lockdown even before that. So dito, um, we will have just like ano lang, pre-test. Okay? So paano po ba natin gagawin ito? So what we can do now is you can open your Facebook Messenger. 
So some of you are watching um, this webinar sa phones din nyo, so you can actually use it. Uh, multitasking tayo, pwede tayong gumamit ng Facebook Messenger while we are actually listening or watching. And then sa search bar po natin, we can type digital tayo. And there, pag nakita po ninyo yung digital tayo na nakikita nyo sa screen ninyo, you can enter, um, don't forget to enter my uh, learn code, ito pong AHA RA02. That will be our pre-test learn code for this morning. So again, para po sa mga kapasok lamang, so we are inviting you guys to open your Facebook Messenger and type digital tayo. And from there, we will now start our pre-test. Okay, don't forget the, our code for this morning. It's AHA RA02. So if you guys are ready, please hashtag digital tayo tayo. Type tayo sa comment section below. Hashtag digital tayo. Ayan. Pinigit tayo. Thank you to Miss Lynn Manara. Alright. And of course, so, dahil ready na rin tayo guys, bibigyan ko po kayo lahat ng 5 minutes para ma-answer natin yung ating Miss Mong Challenge. And your 5 minutes will start now. Ayan. Don't, for, don't forget gang guys sa ano ah. Don't forget po to to use our pre-test learn code for this morning. So while we are actually waiting for your answers, ayan, say good morning and shout out muna tayo from Division of Sulu. Hello po. Good morning. Oy, we have we, um, viewers from Pedro Tuason Senior High School. Good morning. Good morning. And from Deped Tayo NCR. All right. So we have four minutes left. And we have also watching from Cebu and Quezon City. Good morning, Paul. Please double check lang po yung mismong learn code natin. It's AHA RA02. Kindly check lang po natin. Um, I think we're having some difficulty in terms of accessing the mismong pretest natin. But please do, don't forget to use the pretest learn code AHA RA02. So if you're done at lumabas na po, nakasabi dyan, if you're done with the test, it means you took it before already. Alright. And hello po from Cebu again at Butuan City. Alright. We have 2 minutes and 40 seconds left. If you are done, please do type hashtag digital tayo. All right. So may mga nag-comment na na done. So shout out po tayo sa mga tapos na. Ayan. Last two minutes. Para sa mga kapasok lamang, again, for those who just came in for our session for this morning, don't forget to go to your Facebook Messenger and click the digital tayo. It's a search bar po natin. And then click the digital tayo na nakikita niyo sa screen niyo. And then please do answer the question. And don't forget to use the learn code for this morning. It's ARA02. And if you are done, please do type hashtag digital tayo para makita natin kung gaano ba kadami na ang tapos na in taking down with our pretests for this morning. So last one minute and 30 seconds for our participants. Shout out po tayo sa 943 viewers from Facebook Live. And of course here at Zoom. Ayan. Ang learn code po natin is AHA RA02.
Yan, last one minute. If you're done uh, taking the test, I guess... Um, yung mga nagtatanong po regarding the post-test later pa po yan. Alright. Okay, we are... We have... um. Viewers from PUP Manila, good morning. Wednesday, good morning. And so last 30 seconds before we proceed. So last 10 seconds. So hello po from Cagayan de Oro and of course... Das Marinas. All right, so we're done now. Nah. Now we will proceed to our uh, meet of our discussion for this morning. So, ayan. Na yung umaga as part of our discussion when we talk about digital citizenship. At siyempre, paano ba maging magalang is we wanted to practice guys a positive online engagement. And we already know when we talk about practicing positive online engagement, we are looking forward for a possibility, or if not, as part of our reality, na kung saan, when we are talking with one another, even if we are actually away from each other, we are always reminded that every time that we discuss or we converse with someone, na nagita natin through our screen, we are always um, reminded of how positive in online engagement is all about. And with that, Ito, meron lang tayong isang question with this matter, no? For example, sa nakikita ninyo sa mga screen ninyo, kung kayo mismo yung merong ganitong, ano, ganitong experience na kung saan ay how would you react to the following posts? So for example, uh, one of your office mates message you and say, stating that I really hate my boss. So sa tingin nyo, ano ba yung possible way that you would reply? Another question is that merong isang kaibigan natin nagsabi na sobrang hassle na sa Pilipinas, ayoko na dito. Ano sa tingin niyo yung possible way that we would um, reply? No? And of course, what if you have your siblings? Sobrang lazy ko nang pumasok sa school. And as we all know, we are still on lockdown for some parts of the, the country. What if ang message sa atin is tinatamad na silang mag-aral? Ano sa tingin niyo yung, yung i-reply ninyo as part of um, our discussion for this morning? So, panghawakan po ninyo yung mga sagot ninyo ngayon because we will be uh, deep diving with all of those things as we proceed with our discussion for this morning. Always remember, nung nakita po natin, di ba kanina yung scenario, tatlong scenario from office mate to friends and even siblings, let us uh, be reminded when we talk about positive online engagement, the person that we are talking to at the other side of the screen is also a person. Lagi po nating tatandaan as part of our positive online engagement, the office mate or friend or sibling, even if hindi natin sila nakikita face to face, okay, lagi nating tatandaan that they are actually an actual person. And sometimes, diba, when we are all immersed with respect to our online engagement, minsan, we, we tend to forget about the person the, or the other person behind the screen. Diba? What if... Uh, meron tayong nabasa or meron tayong mga nakita na mga comments or let's say posts na kung saan it doesn't um, resonate with what we are um, thinking or we don't agree with that person or with that comment or post. Diba? Dahil sobrang immersed tayo in terms of our online engagement, sometimes we tend to forget that there is actually uh, another person at the other side of the screen. And as part of our discussion this morning, we would just like to really remind all of us, no, not necessarily remind, but provide us the insight na kung saan, behind every screen is actually an actual human being. And no matter kung ano man yung pinagdadaan natin, like for example, some of us are really thinking, what do we need to do after the session? What are different things or um, lists that we need to you know, finish as we proceed with our lives, even if kahit na, nas lockdown tayo, no? let us all remember that when we empathize with other people, when we empathize with the people who are part of the online world, okay, it is very important that we always try to put ourselves in their shoes. 
Kasi minsan nakakalimutan natin, sobrang dami nating iniisip, um, ano bang mga kailangan natin gawin, ano bang mga kailangan tapusin, or what. As part of our discussion for this morning, let us all be reminded that when we empathize with other persons, no, para makuha natin at maintindihan natin saan ba sila nang gagaling, we need to really understand what empathy is all about. And when we define empathy, empathy is actually the ability to feel what another person is experiencing. Kumbaga, putting our shoes to their shoes so that we would be able to understand saan ba sila nang gagaling as part of our discussion. And from that, we would be able to understand that aside from empathy, we need to be reminded of different perspectives that we have as a person. So the way that we would be able to really empower ourselves and of course to really you know, um, be able to engage with a number of people as part of our online community engagement, mahalaga that we also consider the perspectives that we have. Diba? Paano ba natin papalalimin itong perspective na to? So, let's try this activity. So, for those people who are actually, ano, time to look at their screen and then see ano ba yung nakita natin. Some of us might be really seeing a butterfly. Yung first na figure na nakita natin ay, oy butterfly to. On the other hand naman, merong nakakita ng, oy two ang mukha or two faces. But some, actually, meron silang nakita that it's actually both. Isang butterfly at saka isang two faces. Another thing. So this is this time ito naman. What do you see or what do we see on this figure or in the picture? So may nagme-message that oy cup or base, ayan. Meron na yung sabi it's actually two faces. The others are actually saying na oy it's actually both. Again, when we empathize, okay? when we understand, when we create a positive online engagement, let us all be reminded that we are actually coming from different perspectives. Okay? Different perspectives meaning maaaring ang tingin ko sa unang uh, in mong picture is that, uy, dalawang mukha yung nakikita ko or two faces. Diba? On the other hand, there will be other people na magkasabi that, uy, it's actually a base. No? Tama naman po yung sinabi ni Mr. Wena, this is actually a part of optical illusion. But our goal in this discussion is that we need to really understand that in most cases, we would have different perspective. Okay? Maaring marami sa atin makita that both figures, may ilan na maaring bases, base lang yung may kita, or maaring two faces. But the, the lesson for this activity is that we need to understand that we are coming from different perspectives. And then therefore, when we talk about positive online engagement, when we talk about engaging online community, before we comment, before we say something negatively against any other uh, organization or person or human being at the other side of the screen, we need to pause first to reflect and double check, wait lang, saan ba nanggagaling yung taong ito, o saan ba nangagaling itong post na to? Which leads us to the big question, one of the major questions when we talk about online engagement, why is it really very important to communicate online respectfully? Diba? First point is that we need to understand what we came from different experience, we came from different um, walks of life, and we understand that we have different perspectives. And another thing is that it is always our responsibility to really respect the values, feelings, and beliefs of others, and especially accept our differences. Diba? Sometimes, um, the very thing that you know, um, would understand better, kaya tayo mas nagiging gulo, kaya mas nagiging mahirap pakipag-usap sa kapwa Pilipino, is sometimes nakalimutan natin na intindihin where they are coming from or where we are coming from. And always remember, for those who are actually watching for this morning, when we respect others and accept our differences, we recognize that behind every screen is actually a human being. And we can actually have conversations that allow us and even our communities to be better and more, more helpful. Always remember lang, para lang po tayo nakikipag-usap kung dati diba sanay tayo that when we talk about something, when we have different topics and whatnot, we actually have we're actually meeting face-to-face. 
we are talking to mga office mate natin, di ba? Sa pantry o kaya kapag um, morning break, di ba? Nakikipag sa tayo face to face. This time, when we proceed with our online community engagement or online engagement, it's actually the same. It so happened lang that we don't um, physically see them. Di ba? But we virtually see them. Then therefore, it's very important that when we actually practice a more positive online engagement, we need to really understand the value of respect. So how do we do that? How do we make our community, online community, safer? How do we make our online community a more positive one? So first point is that we need to know our audience. It's, be it's always better that we have a perspective of sino ba yung kausap natin at the other side of the screen. No? Thank you, uh, Ms. Tanesha, for agreeing with me. And of course, uh, thank you then for Sir Alex for saying that it's uh, open a two-way process of communication. Tama po yan. And of course, place ourselves in others' shoes. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina. When we talk about other people or when we talk about a certain topic, we need to understand ano ba yung lens that they are looking at. We need to place ourselves in their um, respective shoes. Ano ba yung lens na ginagamit nila? Third point is that we need to treat everyone as important. Sabi nga ni Ms. Liza, sabi niya, so true, we should respect others and see other people as a unique one because we are all different in many ways. Thank you very much for that. And fourth is actually be open. Sometimes, some of the people that I actually engage in, so, in social media, nagkakaroon ng clash, kumbaga nagkakaroon ng debate when we are not open with each other. We're not open in terms of understanding ano ba yung punto ng sinasabi ng kabila at ano ba yung punto ng sinasabi ko. Okay? As part of practicing our positive online engagement, it's very important that we practice open engagement or open communication as well. And fifth, syempre, as part of our discussion for this morning is that we need to really be sensitive with our environment. Diba? Tama yung sinabi din ni Miss Natalie from Zoom naman. Sabi niya, think what you will do if you are talking with them in person. That's right. And I agree with that. Alright? And when we talk about being sensitive to the environment, sa tingin ba natin when, when we are actually engaging with this person or we're actually engaging with this individual for a certain topic, are we helping other people to understand? O baka naman, masyado tayo nag-react without realizing na wait. I'm actually crossing the personal boundaries that the other person has. So always remember that when we wanted to really practice a more positive online engagement, we need to really be sensitive to the environment. All right? So what are the different behavioral uh, recipes that we can try as part of our discussion for this morning? First is that every time someone makes a mistake, okay, lagi nyo nasabihin, agad sa sarili nyo, wait, Nagkamali siya or nagkaroon ng shortcoming yung kausap ko on the other side of the line. Okay. Sabihin niyo sa inyo, everyone is doing their best. Don't, ano, huwag tayong mag-judge agad. But rather, let us practice this. Let's say this, all right, maybe sobrang dami lang niyang ginagawa. We need to understand. Okay. From LGU Santa Barbara, Iloilo. So sabi niya dito is that we need to treat others the way we want them to treat us as well. Very good. Right. Another behavioral recipe that we wanted to share with you when we encounter these kinds of things is that before sending a message when we are all upset, okay, always look at our face in the mirror. Diba? Minsan, ang dami nang nangyayari sa paligid natin. A lot of things are actually happening and we do not know what to prioritize and what not. We have actually a tendency we're in a reply ko nga to bala siya magalit siya. But the goal of um, empathizing and understanding the perspectives of other people is that when we are actually angry, when we are really upset, before we send something, okay, always pause and even look your face in the mirror. At syempre, isa, isa pa, isang tip that I would like to share with you is that if you are angry with the person that you are talking to at the other side of the line, all right, hinga kayo ng, ano, um, inhale, exhale, ng limang beses. And after that, 
Okay, double check ito. Maraming maraming mga Pilipinong nag-aaway because of this thing. Yung use natin ng capital letters at saka exclamation point or period or question mark, sometimes ano, um, it creates more confusion and it, it, it creates more um, kumbaga, negative conversation. So again, when we talk about these things or when we encounter these kinds of things, hinga muna tayo ng malalim. I-send ko ba to o hindi? After, after yun yung i-send or I mean, after yun yung huminga, alright? Check nyo nga kung ako yung makaka-receive nito, ano kaya yung mafe-feel ko? So always remember these kinds of um, tips, alright? And of course, syempre, when I see a message that makes me angry, I will take a deep breath. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina as well. Kung kayo naman yung, ano, yung receiver ng mismong message, ano ba yung kailangang way para mas maintindihan ninyo or mas makontrol natin yung sayo natin is that we need to really take deep breaths. Alright? Yung limang beses na inhale, exhale, it actually clears our mind and it actually helps us to really ano, step back and think what we need to do next. Alright? And syempre, as part of our ano as part of our discussion when we talk about positive online engagement we need to be aware that we need to avoid dangerous conversations as well um dangerous conversations and situations that will put us in a negative or bad side so ano ba yung mga ways or ano ba yung mga conversations that we need to avoid and sino sino nga ba yung dangerous persons that we talk about okay pasok tayo we have actually um identified four different personalities online. And for sure, we are all aware of this um, personalities. So we have cyberbully, we have trolls, we have predators and scammers. So we will just um, run through with the different personalities online. And if you agree, you can actually um, comment with our I know, discussion for this morning. Yeah. Let's talk about cyberbully. Okay, so... Isipin ninyo or imagine that a bully is actually the same thing as someone na na-encounter natin when we are actually during our educational days. I mean, school days. Ito yung mga tao na kung saan sila yung mga mahilig magalit, mabilis magalit. Okay, magkaiba po yung cyber bu- um, bully okay, sa grumpy lang. Ha? Okay, pagka cyber bully, when we talk about cyber bully, yung pambubuli nila from the personal uh, interaction they're actually bringing it in the online conversations. So ano ba yung characteristics ito? Number one, easily angered. Violence in words and actions. Always provoke others. Ito yung mga typical na kailangan tanda. Nag-comment, let's say we are actually having a good conversation online or we actually posted something that will help as yung is yung mental health natin, especially when we, some of us or majority of us are actually in uh, lockdown, di ba? Sila yung nagpo-provoke na, oh, ano, wala ka lang, ano, ano, wala ka lang pagkain or what. Di ba? Sometimes it actually doesn't help us. It doesn't really help us to really think better. So always remember na yung mga cyberbully, they are always abusive to others. Di ba? So dapat, when we actually see these kinds of characteristics, do not forget, okay guys, sa lahat po naman nanonood, please do not engage with them. Kumbaga, tingnan nyo lang, sometimes kasi if, if, if the narrative is actually not good for them, or the topic is not actually the things that they, they understand, sometimes they actually attack our personality. So please do not engage with them because sa kanila, ang kanilang value is that kapag maraming na asar sa kanila o mas marami silang napapaiyak, even if um, in online engagement, masaya sila. So always remember, if you see these kinds of characteristics, huwag na silang pansinin. Alright? Another thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright. Another thing. When we talk about trolls, ito, some characteristics that we need to really take or take note is that they are actually someone who regularly posts negative comments. Or sila yung mga tipo ng user na kung saan nag-copy and paste ng long text or articles sa hindi relevant. Or if hindi, hindi nga minsan eh, all, all the time hindi talaga relevant yung mga pinagsasabi nila. And they do not engage in sensible conversations. 
always remember when you see these kinds of uh, characteristics, they are actually trolls. So for example, the um, ano yung mga example ng mga trolls? Ito yung mga tipo na when we actually are engaging with our stakeholders, especially for for people who are actually working in the government sector. Sometimes we see um, comments or um, users na wala na tayong magandang ginawa. Diba? When we when we actually release a certain project or program, instead of us supporting or them supporting our program, sometimes they always engage us on a negative way. So ang tip natin dito, please, wag na natin silang pansinin, hayaan nyo lamang sila and proceed with our lives because it actually helps our our mental health then as well. Another thing that we need to also consider when we talk about online users are those that we call predators. Okay? Predators are actually some users who pretends to be a victim or in other cases, they pretend to be a hero. Actually, makikita nyo to sa mga mismo na. Ang style nila is that they, they will be a victim or either a victim or a hero in a certain topic and then bigla sila mag-offer ng something to really gain our trust. And sometimes ito yung mga users na kung saan, kunwari, meron kayong pinost na ano, uh, rant. Let's say sabihin natin na isang post regarding sa paggamit, kunwari, ng, ano, ng online platforms para sa, pag, sa, sa work ninyo. Like kunwari, Zoom. And then, meron tayong may kita, barangang ng palitan ng kuro-kuro or nagkaroon ng exchange of ideas or mismong exchange of conversation from different users. And, kasabihin nila, ako nga din eh, um, yan din yung sabi sa akin nung ano, sabi ng kasama ko. Or something to that effect. Okay? Tapos, after that, ang style nila is that they will PM you, they will send you a personal message, and they will actually get your trust. And, ito na yung pinakamalala na ang katakot. Okay? Predators, always remember, they are actually the person or the users who encourage you to distance yourself from the people you trust. Kunwari, nakita nila yung opportunity na nagkaroon kayo ng matinding pagkatalo online ng isang mo or ng isang office mate mo ang sasabihin nila sa'yo ganyan naman yan eh nakatrabaho ko na yan or nakausap ko na yan dati wala nang ginawang masak ano wala nang ginawang masama ah, maganda yung tao na yan so wag mo na siyang pansin eh mo na siya something to that effect so key indicator when we actually pinpoint a uh, predators itong number three they are the person na kung saan they will encourage you to distance yourself from people you trust, especially to your family. So always remember this kind of characteristic. Another point, or another person that we need to be aware of is that itong mga scammers, as we are engaging in a more online, diba? online activities, like for example, bank transfer, request of documents, as, as inquiries from different um, establishments and organizations or companies or other government agencies, meron tayong nakakasalamuhan ng mga scammer. Okay, ano ba yung mga ginagawa ng mga scammer? Number one, they intend to steal money by not giving their exact information or clear explanation. Before, di ba, sila yung mga ano, dati, nung nausin yung mismong SMS or text messaging, di ba, nakareceive tayo ng mga emergency Tawag, transfer ka nga ng 10,000 kasi naaksidente yung anak mo or kamag-anak mo or what not. Tayo naman before, dahil hindi pa tayo ganun ka-aware na meron palang ganun tao or user, oy sige, saan ka ba si sent or what? This time, nag- nag-activate na rin sila online. They're gonna send you PM, no? And they will send you some link na kung saan they will just get the information that you have. Okay. Another thing that we can actually see for online scammers is that tama yung sinabi ni Ms. Rose Badalier from Zoom. Budol. Online budols. Ayan. They actually lack transparency or does not respond to questions clearly. Um, ano ba yung mga online budols that we are actually seeing? Oh, sa mga mahilig mag-online shopping lately, especially sa mga anong araw na ba ngayon? Uy, malapit na ang sweldo. Diba? Ngayon, we wanted to really buy something for our family especially online, 
Tapos, biglang may mag-pop up sa screen natin at nagsasabi na i-enter natin yung mga um, bank details natin to order. Okay, always remember meron pong mga ganyan. Kaya mahalaga, kapag po nag-enter tayo sa mga websites, please do double check po yung mga yung link na pinapasukan ninyo. Binsan, pindot lang tayo ng pindot, enter lang tayo ng enter ng information natin. Yun pala, nakakapi na pala yung mismong information that we are actually um, typing. So please be, ano, please be vigilant on those kicks. And sometimes they are actually too good to be true. When, kung mayroon sila yung mga tipo ng mga user na kung saan, if, if you will answer their quiz or you, uh, you will answer a certain questions from them, you will receive iPhone or you will receive um, brand new rice cooker. Something like that effect. So please be vigilant that sometimes online scammers now are always too good to be true. Okay, so we were able to really discuss yung four types of online personalities, dangerous online personalities. We have cyberbully, trolls, we have actually predators, and of course, online scammers. So the question now is how can we avoid dangerous conversations and situations? Number one, please do not befriend strangers. Wag po tayo agad ng someone that we don't actually talk. I mean, tayo kasi pag, uh, let's say, biglang nag, ano, nag, nag send ng friend request. Tapos, wala naman tayong kakilala sa mga friends na. Gusto lang nating maparami yung mismong friend list natin. Accept tayo agad, please. Some of the people, dangerous people, actually use that as, a per, uh, as first step to really engage with us. So please do not be friends strangers. Second, please make sure our personal information is always private. All right? Third is, if you feel or meron tayong gut feeling that that account or that person is actually medyo dubious or suspicious, please do unfollow or block them. All right? And syempre, if you feel that they are actually doing um, illegal or offensive actions, don't forget to maximize the report button on Facebook or even in other social media platforms, all right? And syempre, as part of our way of really, you know, engaging positive online engagement or online communities that we can also maximize the different platforms in Facebook, especially on unfriending, unfollowing, and blocking, okay? Yung, yung way natin ng pag-unfriend, if you feel you have Facebook friends, maybe wala naman talaga kayong close friends or close connections, maybe you can unfollow them or unfriend them. Or if you have a close friend or part of your community or your workplace, sabihin natin na pero mas, masada natin kinatawag iting mga negatrons, eh, hashtag negatrons, we can actually unfollow them. If you feel that their content is actually not safe for you, then maybe you can unfollow them. It actually gives you that opportunity, that clear space para din pangalagaan yung mental health natin, especially right now that we are actually um, staying at homes most of the time because of the, the, the lockdown and the pandemic. And another thing that we can also do as part of our option is really blocking. Hindi na talaga kaya ng unfollow. Then maybe it's really high time to maximize blocking other person. So ito yung minsan, ito yung mga kailangan yung tandaan. Pag meron mga makukulit na mga user na kung saan send, ang send ng mga links o kaya hindi naman ng kakilala o kaya mag-message lang sa inyo and biglang mag magsasabi na mag-send kayo ng bank account or what not, maybe it's better to really block them. Or if they're actually harassing you already, please do block them. Alright? Another thing that we can also maximize is that if you feel an online user is actually creating um, kumbaga negative conversations in, in your page or in your personal profiles, please, let's maximize the report buttons. Okay? Huwag po tayong mahirapan o huwag tayong mahiya na mag-report ng uh, accounts that actually violates us as a person. So always remember that sa panahon ngayon, mahalang pangalagaan din natin ang ating mental health at pangalagaan din natin yung ating safety when we use online platforms. So don't forget to really um, click yung report button dun sa mismo three dotted lines na makikita natin sa mismong um, screens natin or sa pages that we are actually following or friends or connections natin. And say, um, 
we need you know, if if you feel that that account or sa tingin niyo meron pang ibang mga activities na nangyayari with respect to your online uh, profiles or your profiles online we can actually get assistance through Facebook um, health center so we can actually key in with our links in www.facebook.com slash health or if we feel that your account is actually hacked please do um, contact with our Facebook health center para at least we would be able to really meet yung assistance natin or yung health center natin every time that we are actually encountering some negative um, environment or we are actually looking at the possibility that it, that a lot of users um, are not contributing to the positive online engagement that we are actually talking about. So possible questions that you can have is actually how do you choose you, um, how you can get your notifications on Facebook, where you can find your Facebook settings and whatnot. So to, I know, to maximize our Facebook health center. Okay. So we have uh, frequently asked questions, Jan, that you can actually check and um, you can actually revisit it so that it can help you in creating a more uh, positive online engagement when we talk about our online community. Now, this time, let's proceed with managing our screen time. Some of the things that we can actually focus on when we talk about positive online engagement is actually managing our screen times. Diba? As we all know, our main platform natin para makipag-communicate, even if our uh, personal contacts or yung mga family members natin who are actually staying outside of our area, or those people, especially like for me, uh, I'm province and then I'm residing here in Manila, and I feel na I need to really coordinate or to also ask some questions kung kamusta na nga ba yung mga family members ko na staying in the province, our platform is actually yung mga social media platforms available. So, how do we manage now our screen time? Ito yung mga ways that we can actually maximize when we talk about yung screen time natin. Okay? So, let me share with you some of the behavioral tips for managing our screen time. So, if we really want to manage our time spent on social media, okay, we can actually try using your time on Facebook feature under settings and privacy. Later on, after this um, session, you can try it para ma-double check ninyo. Meron tayong kumbaga feature na kung saan pwede natin stop or magkaroon tayo ng time na, oy, nag limit na tayo sa paggamit ng Facebook or ng social media platforms, we can actually activate that. But in Facebook, we can check it at, set, at settings and privacy. So, we can check the your time on Facebook feature under the settings and privacy button. Next, if we really wanted to improve our focus or lessen our distractions, ano ba yung way, behavioral tips that we can actually try Number one, we can turn our DND or yung do not disturb in our phones. For some of the users ng, ano, ng smartphones, meron po tayong platform ng do not disturb. Like kunwari, meron kayong mga tinatapos ng mga papers or documents or mga correspondences that you need to really um, answer as, as soon as possible or finish as soon as possible, we can actually maximize the do not disturb or the DND uh, platform. Another thing is that we can also mute our push notifications on social, social media. Pwede that, um, mare, feeling ninyo, dapat uh, during your break, dapat instead of you using social media, better na mag-take 15-minute nap lang ko. The better na magkaroon tayo ng ano, mute natin yung push notifications natin para hindi tayo ma-distract. Alright? Another point or another thing that we can actually try when we want to improve our focus or less instructions is using our quiet mode on Facebook. You can actually search it in your settings page. Alright? So, ito yung ways that we can actually check on how we quiet mode or use our quiet mode. So, you can uh, click yung mismong three, line, three dotted line or three lines at the top right hand corner of your Facebook applications. Then you can scroll down and click your time on Facebook. Then, sa slider nun, next doon, pwede nyo makita yung quiet mode. So, makikita ninyo, um, manage quiet mode para 
ma-maximize ninyo anong oras o ilang oras lang kailangan ninyo when you use your social media. So that's one way to really ano, practice your or managing your quiet mode um, areas. All right? Before we proceed with our next um, behavioral tips, meron tayong phone-in question or meron tayong um, sabi niya, how can we show empathy to people in the time of the pandemic? So it's better po um, for a person who actually sent this question, we can actually show empathy to people in the time of pandemic is maximizing yung ano, parang ano ba, uh, expanding our patience and if not, bigyan natin ng oras sa pag-intindi where the person is coming from. Diba? Sometimes, um, there is actually a way na kung saan, pwede natin deadmahin muna for the meantime kung feeling natin sobrang negative na nung discussion or yung sinasabi ng mismong uh, kausap natin uh, on the other side of the, the screen. One way to also show empathy um, ngayon, especially ngayon in lockdown, is we need to be more ano critical thinker naman kapag ka yung meron tayong kausap na kung saan um hindi na siya naging respectful we, we do not want to cross that line so aside na makipagretali tayo with that person or makipag-engage tayo ng mas ma negative way better that we need to use kind and encouraging words all right so i guess we're able to really um answer that question so now let's move with our um, another behavioral tips for managing our screen time. So if you have some questions or uh, clarifications, please feel free to comment those sections um, down below, comment section down below. All right. So if we want now to get more or better sleep, we can actually try this thing. So two things. Avoid using our gadgets one to two hours before bedtime. So if we are actually having difficulty when we are, we want to really sleep, Diba? Sometimes kasi ang bilis ng makagamit ngayon ng phones, okay, pwede natin iwanan lang sa tabi natin or sa ilalim ng una natin. It's better para for us to really get more sleep or better sleep is actually cap natin kailangan two hours before or one hour before tayo matulog kailangan na ng phones. So for the people who are actually working, please don't forget to ano, to, don't forget to create your threshold na kung saan, kunwari, by 8 p.m. every day, from Monday to Fridays, hanggang dun lang kayo pwedeng gumag ng phones. You can actually set those times uh, those times for you. No? Or, you can actually write down all your thoughts on a notepad before sleeping. So, if meron mga things to do na hindi pa natapos uh, today, and you're actually tired for the whole day, maybe better way to actually proceed with your thoughts is that ilista nyo na yung mga gusto nyo gawin at kailangan gawin for the next day. Then, iwan nyo na siya sa table ninyo and then go to bed. So that's actually can help us out in terms of maximizing or getting more or better sleep. Alright? Next. We can actually practice mindfulness. So, how do we do that? If we want to practice mindfulness, we can set our social media off times or zero phone hours. For me, um, just to share with you some tip that I can do, um, pag sun, since the start of the lockdown, as much as possible, I don't use my phones. Unless otherwise meron siyang emergency, then that's the only time that I open it. But if I don't feel to really, you know, be immersed with social media platforms, I allot at least five hours every Sunday na okay, wala muna tayong phones or wala muna engagement either in the different um uh, different platforms that we have. Alright? So, again, our goal is that we want to protect our mental health as well. Since tayo-tayo lang, especially nakakaawa naman, what if tayo lang mag sa bahay. So, these are the things that we can actually maximize that will help us out as part of our managing our screen time. Alright? Now, let's if you want to spend more time with our family, one way to really maximize it or manage our screen time is, number one, finding things to do together on social media. So, pwede na if gusto natin magkaroon ng bonding moments with our family, pwede natin garoon, ano, pwede tayong magkaroon ng mag-agree 
sa mismong family, ano ba yung mga pwede ninyong gawin ang social media? So, pwede kayong mag, ano, mag create ng video together that you can upload. Or kung malayo naman yung family members ninyo, pwede kayong mag-set ng inyong family hour where eh, meron kayong online kamustahan. Diba? Or you can actually maximize some games online that can actually help you out in terms of you guys being connected as well. All right. Siyempre, we can also pl- um, you can also plan regular non-social media bonding activities. Ano ba yung mga regular non-social media bonding activities? So, kung meron kayong mga chikiting sa mga nag-work dito ngayon na nasa work from home, siyempre, di ba, may mga online class na din, ganyan, lalo na yung mga 7 years old, ganyan. Pwedeng bonding session ng mga nanay or tatay is actually yung paggawa ng assignment or pagka- pagkaya paggawa ng... Um, activities na magkasama kayo. Okay? Possible din way na pwede kayo magkaroon ng sabay na workout, jog in place, mga ganyan. So, pwede pong mga ganun yung mga regular ng social media bonding, non social media bonding activities that you can do. O kaya, para sa mga mahiling magbuto, you can actually have your cooking show. Sabihin, sabihin natin, like for example, sa mga um, viewers natin who are residing with their parents. So, pwedeng kung magkakapatid kayo, kung tatlo kayo magkakapatid or dalawa, you can actually have a cook-off. Diba? Parang, sino magluto ng lunch ninyo at yung dinner ninyo, so pwedeng nakaasahan nyo with, with members of the family. And, syempre, pwede is actually gardening or pwede din movie marathon. Alright? So, pwede yun. Another thing now, let's proceed with our managing our screen time. So, want to have better work or life balance. Ito na yung mga nasa work from home. Ito na yung laging lang na tanong, paano ba magkaroon ng work, uh, life balance sa work from home? Let us try limiting our personal interactions on platforms primarily for work. Okay? Diba meron tayong um, meron tayong ways na kung saan we can actually communicate with our with our friends na kung saan we can actually limit our personal interactions on platforms for work. So, kung kung may email naman kayo, you can actually use your email or maximize your email for your work-related um, projects or programs. And syempre, you can also use blocking of time for non-work things you need or want to do. So, kung gusto nyo mag-online karaoke, okay lang. Pero, make sure lang na ano, uh, magkaroon lang kayo ng mismong schedule as well. Alright? So, tip natin for this ano, for this uh, morning before we end our discussion for this morning is ano ba yung mga possible bonus behavioral tips for general well-being? Number one, let us all exercise. Okay. Alam natin that we are not going out of our houses or homes or boarding house, ganyan. Please do. Kung, may, kung kaya natin magising ng maaga, since hindi naman tayong biyabiyahe, especially sa mga nasa Metro Manila na before, ang lagi nating sinasabi is traffic, we can actually practice yoga or meditation kahit 15 minutes. O kaya exercise tayo ng 10 minutes before ano, maligo. So one way to do that is actually pwedeng ganun. O kaya after nating mag-coffee or mag, mag-morning breakfast, so pwedeng ano lang tayo muna, um, small exercise para hindi tayo mahirapan. And as much as possible, we need to gate to get actually six to eight hours of sleep. Alright? And syempre, ito pa yung isang importante or isang tip that we wanted to really share with you. Let us all have at a break in checking latest news on COVID-19. Sometimes, yes, I understand we need to really be aware of the things happening around. But if we feel na it actually affects our mental health, go balik ako yung mental health natin, pwedeng magkaroon lang tayo ng break. Okay. Hindi naman mawawala yung mga information. We can actually check it naman later. But if we feel we are stressed out because of these um, issues or news, then maybe let's ano, take a break. Another thing is we can set goals and plan a daily routine. So pwede tayo magkaroon ng schedule, kailan tayo gising, kailan tayo kakain, or anong kain natin, at anong oras tayo mo tulog. Mahalaga lagi na pag na-stress na kayo with your work, especially pag work from home kayo, Make sure lang ano, make sure lang na you also consider those ano, those schedules. 
kung kung feeling niyo masyado na kayong stress because of a lot of things happening on online so magkaroon kayo ng 15 minute break jog in place o kaya inom kayo ng water o kaya lakad-lakad kayo sa bahay okay so make sure lang na ano make sure lang na you limit yourself from encountering more stress kasi tandaan niyo po mas mahirap talaga at stressful kapag work from home rather than sa office environment kasi sa office environment natin actually meron talaga tayong specific place at yung utak natin ay nakaredy talaga na ah, trabaho lang to but when we are actually working from home there are instances na kung saan habang nag-work tayo biglang merong family thing or merong personal thing that we need to address so ito yung mga bagay na minsan kailangan natin ma-maximize when we are actually working from home and also don't, don't forget to really look for ways that we we can actually relax and do healthy activities that we enjoy. Always remember, kapag sobrang stressful na po tayo at sobrang anxious na rin tayo, ay mas mahirap pong mag-continue ang work from home. So especially for teachers um, ngayong pasokan na, so please don't forget po na kapag kunwari, may mga breaks kayo na kailangan nyong i-maximize, especially with your online learning or hybrid learnings, di ba? Or online blended learning or blended, blended learning, pwede po ninyong gawin is that magkaroon kayo ng mga breaks. Mga small breaks lang, kahit five minutes. Walang phone, inhale, exhale lang, then drink enough water. Tapos, if you feel naman na, kunwari, um, you're typing na most of the time or nakaupo na lang kayo, actually, pwede po na makatulong sa inyo yung 10-minute break. Parang after nyong matapos yung isang checklist, pwede nyong gawin 5 minutes, akit baba kayo sa hagdan or whatnot. So pwedeng ganun po yung ano, pwedeng ganun yung gawin ninyo. And for those actually, uh, no, you have some questions, please feel free to write it down below para sa ano natin, Q&A natin mamaya. So another question that um, meron tayong titignan later on. So ito yung mga tips na kailangan natin ano, tandaan when we talk about being magalang and creating our online positive and environment, especially for all of us who are working from home. And syempre, as part of our summary, you know, the things that we discuss as um, syempre tayo bilang part ng digital citizen, how can we promote digital well-being by being respectful digital citizens? Una, let's practice positive online engagement. So yung mga tips sinabi ko sa inyo kanina, empathy and perspective, don't forget those um, tips or those information. Siyempre, let us avoid dangerous conversations and situations. If we feel na meron tayong kausap na scammer pala, eject na agad. Huwag na tayo agad makipag-usap sa kanila. Okay? Or if we feel na meron mga cyberbully, huwag na tayo makapag-engage sa kanila. Alright? And siyempre, number three, let us all manage our respective screen times. Para hindi tayo stressful habang nagkatrabaho tayo online sa bahay, Let us maximize our schedules. Let's create our um, yung mga med- meditation hour or time natin in the morning and in the evening before we sleep. Tapos yung mga online and offline times natin or zero phone hours natin, we can actually maximize that. Or if you want to really bond with our family members, please do create um, ano, activities that can help them all together as well. All right. So, ngayon... Um, We will now, I guess, um, before we provide to you the link for our evaluation form and yung post-test natin, siguro we will now entertain the questions um, from the different uh, groups. Okay, so sige, tingnan natin, ano, tingnan natin yung mga questions na dun sa baba. And of course, uh, wag muna kayong maayos kasi we will be sending to you our online evaluation form, and syempre meron pa tayong post-test, okay? Before we end our session for this morning. So, ito yung question. Sabi niya, how do we protect our information online against scammers and hackers? Okay. As part of our Q&A, if we want to protect our information online, let us not share too much. So, wag po tayong share ng mga, like for example, um, nakakuha kayo ngayon ng nahanap nyo na yung passport ninyo. So, tuwang-tuwa kayo, naglinis kayo ng gamit ninyo, huwag nyo agad picturean yung passport nyo at saka ipakita yung mga nitty-gritty informations ninyo. So, please don't don't show it in social media. O kaya, before we answer a survey 
online. Let us make sure na legitimate yung mismo organization or group na nagtatanong nung or nag-send mismo ng link para aware tayo with that. Okay? Another ano another question dito is that um how to manage the Facebook if important matters like updates in webinar, work group, or events if muted in quiet mode. Ayan. So, ito po yung dito papasok yung schedule natin. Um, meron pong ano, lagi nyo pong tatandaan na kapag ka po merong sa lahat po ng ano, lahat po ng mga users natin, si Facebook as part of um, online engagement is actually 13 years old and up lang din po yung may mga account na meron dapat kay Facebook. And if you feel na meron tayong mga users na 8 years old below or 12 years old bababa, please do take note kung kakilala nyo yung mga parents or yung parents nila or kakilala nyo yung mga friends, please inform them, ganyan. O kaya, dun sa question naman na managing yung Facebook natin kapag ka-important matters, ito po dito mapasok yung schedule natin. Diba? Sabi ko sa inyo kanina, you can actually maximize yung schedule of work. Kailan kayo mag-open ng updates? Okay? Kailan kayo mag-open ng crucial um, announcements? So, pwede nyo pong i-include yan sa mismong, ano, mismong schedule po natin. So, another question is, what if the person on the other side does not respect my values? Is it bad to react the same way? Alright. Well, I understand that we are actually human beings. Kapag meron tayo mga online conversations na kung saan medyo below the belt na yung nagiging atake ng kausap natin, my suggestion is that huwag na tayo makipag-engage with them. The better way, be the better person. How for me, like, if meron akong mga encounter ng mga ganong mga users, what I do, kumari sobrang close-minded nila, what I do is, um, thank you very much for your idea, thank you very much for the information that you shared, I guess um, we are not talking in the same uh, wavelength or if not uh, parang the same perspective, maybe it's better to stop this conversation. But I, I, I understand where you are coming from, but I won't be able to engage with you on that case because I think we will create more clashes pa. So pwedeng ganun yung, ano, pwedeng ganun yung instance natin kapag ka, kapag ka nag-usap tayo. So, another thing, how do you respectfully turn down bosses who keep on sending you work-related chats or personal messages even during wee hours of the night when you're supposed to be focusing on your family bonding and self-care? So, the better way to actually maximize it is that you can send your online, ano, alam naman din ng mga boss natin, siguro, siguro, um, baka dahil mismong sila anxious lang din sa mga kailangan gawin at tapusin, you can actually remind them. Um, better to send to Mary. Hi, ma'am. Hi, sir. Um, thank you very much po for um, sending this information or this work-related um, info. But I won't be able to respond to you on this case kasi medyo late na po. Um, I'm actually having my family banding. Pwede ganun naman yung mismong pagsagot. O kaya, you can actually ano, um, give a call with respect to your... Uh, boss. O kaya, you can actually message them. Hindi naman magagalit yung mga boss ninyo. So, kasi min kailangan din naman natin ng paalala sa mga, lalo na yung mga office mate natin na out of the blue biglang 1am na mag-message din sa atin. Minsan nakakalimutan din nila kasi syempre, inahabol yung mga deadline and so so forth. So, pwedeng ganun yung pwedeng gawin natin for that. Alright? So, another thing. Um, is it true that some opinions are more valuable than the others? Okay. So, in terms of opinion, again, tandaan po natin, let's go back to the perspective um, topic kanina. Okay. Ang opinion ay nanggagaling sa magkaibang lente. So, maaring ang opinion ko ay salungat sa opinion ng isang tao. So, pwede ko bang sabihin na tama ang opinion ko? Kung pag-uusapan po natin yung social interaction or babalikan natin yung positive online engagement, maaring hindi po siya maresolba agad. Okay, maaring hindi agad masabi na tama kayo or tama yung sinasabi niya. Ang mahalagang bagay lang po na gawin natin is if we feel that the opinions being shared to us by a certain user does not necessarily um, resonate when uh, to the things where we are coming from or the things that we are actually sharing, the better way to do it is 
to really stop engaging with the person. But do not forget to be very respectful on that scale. Okay? Um, okay lang naman pong mag Sabi nga nila, di ba? Agree to disagree. Si meron po talagang mga issues na kung hindi naman kailangan talagang maniwala at sumagot tayo sa lahat ng bagay. So, in, in small cases, um, kumbaga, pwede natin choose your own battles on this case. Or pwedeng gawin natin at uh, choose your own conversation, kumbaga, para at least, ano, um, safer din na din tayo for, for, for our, ano, for our engagement. So, always remember na if may mga cyberbully and meron talagang actual threat sa inyo, let's say, kung marin, nagkaroon kayo ng hindi pagkakaunawan sa isang online platform or forum na kung saan bigla na lang kayong sinabihan na pupuntahan kita at binantaan kayo or what not, please do report it to proper authorities. Meron tayong mga sa barangay, meron tayong, sana we, you can get your numbers sa barangay, PNP, and other agencies that you can also maximize pag kami mga threat na talaga. Because, Siyempre, ang goal talaga natin while we are actually working from home, we need to be aware that there are people who will give us threats. So, mahalaga lang din po na meron tayong kopya ng mga mabilis tawagan or mga uh, kopya ng landlines or contact information ng barangay and even our police para at least ma-report natin at naprotektahan din tayo for this people. So, Last two questions. So, how can we ensure if you are doing well as a digitally magalang citizen? Actually, as part of that question, pwede pong ano, um, pwede po na i-double check natin yung mga pinag-usapan natin. Itong tatlang bagay na nagiging sa screen. Kung gusto nyo mayalaman kung kayo ba ay naging magalang as a digital citizen, you can actually change the statements into question. Am I practicing uh, positive online engagement? If the answer is yes, then very good. Next question, or next um, statement, let's turn it to a question. Am I avoiding dangerous conversations and situations online? If the answer is yes, then good thing, you're actually practicing being a magalang as part of digital citizenship. Third question, am I managing screen time properly? If the answer is yes, then sa tatlong tanong po na binigay natin kanina, or sinabi ko sa inyo, you are actually practicing being magalang as part of digital citizenships. Okay? So, going back lang din sa isang question kanina, regarding dun sa 13-year-old requirement for Facebook, alright? So, there are actually some statistics or information that some of the students are now required to really um, create Facebook um, profiles so that they can engage with online um, classrooms or online education, alright? So, please don't forget para sa mga magulang po na nandito at nanonood for our session for this morning and for some teachers who are actually present as well, para po sa mga 13-year-old po, okay? Kailangan pa rin po ng parental guidance. Para sa mga estudyante na 13-year-old, 13 years old below, okay? Please, Tandayan po natin, or kung i-require po sila, yung mga anak natin na mag-create ng gantong um, profile, please magkaroon po tayo ng supervision while they are using it. Mahalaga po na gabay po tayo bilang mga magulang at nakatanda sa kanila na para sa kanilang mga gumagamit ng mga gantong um, platform, kailangan meron po tayong presensya. Hindi po pwedeng, masaya gamitin mo lang yan, tapos hindi natin sila binabantayan. So ang goal po natin, natin dapat is, habang ginagamit nila yung mismong platform, what we can do is actually nandun tayo sa tabi nila at nagsusupervise tayo ng nilang paggamit. That way, we are actually protecting them from dun sa mga bad personalities na napag-usapan natin kanina. And also, we are actually guiding them to really be better as part of digital citizenship. And syempre, it's really better to really coordinate with our teachers or their teachers as well para mamalaman at mamonitor din natin kung Tama ba yung mga ano, mga ginagawa nila? Okay? And syempre, bilang paalala lamang din po, as much as possible, okay? Huwag po nating hayaang gumawa yung ating mga anak o mga kamag-anak natin na lower than um, 13 years old na gumamit ng online platform. Because again, Facebook is actually strictly 
implementing na kailangan 13 years old and above po yung users natin. And kung meron man pong itong requirements, lalo na sa school, pwede po tayo muna makipag-usap sa mga teachers po natin, natin or nila para mas masiguro po natin na legitimate din po yung mismo requests. So, maraming maraming salamat din po for everyone. Ayan.